So hey you guys, this is Glamazon Tay and I'm back with another video and this is the hairstyle I'm going to be showing you guys how to achieve and this is also going to be a very, very, very detailed way of how to install your wigs. It's my new routine. So this wig is actually from Wiggins Hair and it's a 26 inch body wave 13 by 4 HD lace frontal wig. It's got 250% density, but I'll get into that a little bit later on. So first things first to start out, I will be using my BW2 powder and my developer that is 30 volume. And I would just be mixing this together until it gives me like a very thick, thick cake base consistency. Now with me, I know BW2 is very old school. Everybody used to use it back in the day, but honestly, I feel like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I've been using it for a while. It, I still continuously use, use it now. I've even tried to use like Kaleidoscope and a couple other brands, but they just never did it for me. So next, I'm going to just go ahead and actually take this cake battery thick, thick mix. And I'm going to hold it up just to see how it drips. And if it doesn't drip, then I know it's actually ready to be put onto the wig. So I'm just going to go ahead and smear that across the wig. Make sure I'm not pushing it all the way through, but just kind of coating it because all we're trying to do is pretty much bleach the knot. So I just take my time and be very, very gentle with brushing it onto the wig. Now, this is exactly what it should look like afterwards. And I mean, you don't, you can see it on the other side, but it's not like pushing through. It's just like a slight little glide. All we're trying to do is bleach the knots. I feel like I love the bleach knots look because number one, it's really, really blonde. And then when you do it, it just looks like more scalp and it makes it look more realistic. So I actually am a big, big, big fan of it. Now with doing this, I do leave it on for possibly about, mm, I think I leave it on for maybe like, I'm not even gonna hold you, maybe like 15 to 20 minutes, but I am continuously watching it while I'm doing that. And then I just go through and I kind of rinse it, but to be able to gauge whether it's ready or not, I just kind of peel a little bit of the white back to see if any of the edges, I mean, any of the knots have turned blonde and that's pretty much how I know if it's ready or not. And I'm just gonna make sure I rinse everything because if not, the product will continue to bleach. But once it hits water, soap, and all that kind of stuff, it pretty much stops. Like it doesn't, once it hits water, pretty much it stops all together anyway. And then I'm just gonna wash this out really, really good. I use my kitchen sink, as you guys know, and I just scrub it, make sure it's really, really good. Now, another thing you can do if you want to get rid of some of the yellowness is you can use Shimmer Light Shampoo, and that's a purple shampoo that tones it and give it more of a cooler tone. But with me personally, I just like the way it looked and the way that it bleached. So I didn't really exactly need to do anything else to it except for just wash it. But I have used Shimmer Light Shampoo on the knots before when I felt like it was a little too orangey or a little too brassy, but yeah. And look at the luster of this hair. Oh my God, I love it. It was so nice, so pretty. It held the water really, really good. And as I said, this is a 26 inch body wave, 13 by four HD lace frontal wig. And I did get 250% density. Now, this is another way that I've actually started doing my wigs is, I've noticed when I've seen the like, um, drag queens do their wigs, they pretty much would put down the lace and then I would see, well, the wig makers of the, the drag wigs, they would pretty much use this little elastic band. So I'm like, what is that for? And now I know it's, they use that so that they can hold the lace down and not rip it. So when you're pulling it, sometimes this lace can actually, you know, rip or pull or put holes in it. But when you use it with the elastic like this, it doesn't leave any room for it to rip or put little holes in it or none of that at all. It literally just pretty much does what it's supposed to do of holding the wig in place. Now with this wig, it did come a little pre-plugged, but of course you guys know I'm gonna go in and pluck it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pluck, maybe part back about uh, half an inch if I can say. And then I'm just gonna pluck it. Now with my hands, I cannot pluck using tweezers like that because it used to make my hands act up. So one day I decided to use my pliers. I just wanted to use my pliers. And this method actually worked. It was a lot quicker. It helped it look a lot better to me. It was a lot more gradient. 
Um, the only thing is when you're doing this method, you cannot just pull and rip hard as you can because you're going to put a hole in a wig. It's almost like I'm pulling little pieces, but I'm being very quick with it and I'm not like tough on it. If I'm pulling and it's not coming, I just let it go. Um, but if it comes a little bit hair at a time, it works for me. And then also, you definitely have to make sure you wet it up. You have to use mousse because the mousse help it, helps the little hair strands to loosen up and not be so strict and tough. So when you're actually pulling it, they pull and slip out a lot better. But yes, y'all, I use pliers to pluck my wig. I've been doing this for like a while now and I never wanted to tell nobody because I was like, I know they're going to come for me talking about why is you plucking this wig with pliers? But I promise you it works for me and it works so fast and it's just easier to handle because when I would do tweezers, it would take me so long and my freaking fingers would be hurting like I just was over it. I ain't even going to hold you. I was just like, ciao. And, and I don't want to do this no more. Like, get somebody else to do it. So, yes, I plucks with pliers. I don't know if anybody else is like this. Let me know. <laughs> but with this, you see that I'm kind of barely grabbing. Like, I'm not pulling. I'm not ripping my lace. Like, I, and then y'all know I do my wig sales and stuff. So, I was like, I cannot have my lace out here ripped with holes in it and stuff. But so, me using an elastic method to hold this and also using the little pliers and just letting it go pretty loosey um or pretty loose it really really worked for me it was just nice i liked it it was it was about so next i'm just gonna actually comb this part back and then once i see if it's gradient or if it's gonna like mesh well with my hairline I just kind of work on that a little bit. And then also, I don't know if I told you guys before, but one time I had cut one of my wigs on my old, um, I used the old wig and that was perfect to my hairline, put it on my wig head and actually outlined it. And that's how I know the style and size of my wig. So when I do a style, I know exactly how much hair needs to be down and how much hair needs to be up because a lot of times these frontals are a little bit bigger on my head. So that just helps me to make sure everything is precise and I keep it looking the way it's supposed to look because girl, I need my wigs to be laying. And this is very essential even with doing a updo. So definitely if you can do that, go ahead and do that. So you see me cutting the ear tabs and that's basically to, you know, make sure I'm cutting everything off. I don't need all the little access child. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that part now this gets to the fun part this is the fun part that i love now with me i haven't done crimps in a long time but i was like okay i want to try to do some more crimps because i think the girls love the crimps now i'm going to be using my chi silk fusion that's like one of my favorite serums to pretty much press my hair out it gives it shine it gives it the luster that i love it also makes sure that it does not weigh the hair down you can use quite a bit of serum and your hair is not going to get stringy um so it's not like a grease but it is a very fine oil and i love it and then i want to do the crimps and i knew this was long so i knew it would be such a hit it would be really pretty i actually did not cut no layers in this wig at all either it's just letting you guys know so this is my eap wave crimper or whatever i have to link that below i don't have the proper pronunciation but i've had it for about a year and i wasn't able to use it but i used it today and now with this, I put it on the highest degree level, which was 450. I went ahead and clamped it and it has a lock button and unlock. I clicked the lock. So basically it will hold the crimp. I don't have to physically, I don't physically have to hold it clamped down. I can just kind of lock it. I clamp it, lock it and put it in. And then you guys see, I just follow the grooves with each one. With this hairstyle, it took me about an hour and 30 minutes to crimp all this hair. So make sure you plan accordingly because I was extremely rushing so bad because I literally had to get my crimps done, but they look really pretty. And over time, they actually start to look a little bit more like deep wave or like a curly deep wave wig. I don't know, I like the vibe of it though. Very pretty, very cute, and it looks extremely good. And then another thing that I noticed that helps my crimps the last and my curls is I spray it while I'm doing it. So you see I crimped the first one and then I sprayed it and then I crimped the second one and then I kind of sprayed it. So it's almost like I'm locking it in and it's a lot better than what it was giving before child. 
So this is my new little wig stall and wig install routine. I told you guys I would do it. So all you need is like some knee highs or some pantyhose. I will have them linked below in my Amazon store. But the reason I like to use knee highs now is because they are way thinner than wig caps. And I'm gonna be using my um, Sally Hansen leg spray in a color beige glow. I had tan glow and I thought it was a, might be a tad darker, but I was like, let me try beige glow. And I used it and it honestly gave me very Caucasian woman tease. But the problem was it was a little, it was light, it ended up working, but cause I know how to finesse stuff. But moving forward, I will be going back to tan glow or I would just have to look for something online because it wasn't giving what it's supposed to give. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the ear tabs. Y'all remember that one time, y'all, I came up with this method in the beginning and I don't think nobody knows, which is actually pretty funny. I just randomly did it. I'm pretty sure somebody else probably did it before they just never posted on YouTube, but yeah, I never would have known about it. So now I'm just gonna cut my ear tabs out and I do the ear tab, I slid it right behind my ear. That way my whole entire ear can fit inside of the hole and then basically it's not stretching it because I want to keep the tab in the front kind of flat to my head that way that when I go to put the glue on it it's going to stay and then this is me using my spray and I'm going to go ahead and spray the inside of my wig just to make sure that everything is you know lining up making sure it's where it's supposed to be at now this is one of my favorite glues I love to use is boho and they have boho active I love the boho it works really good for me um, and I don't really sweat too much, but when I was working out, it still held for me as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use my Eric and Tay method and pretty much he puts one layer and then he um, goes ahead and, you know, spread it out. Now, one thing I do want y'all to also notice is that I did spray my wig cap before I actually went ahead and put the glue on. Cause the old routine is I used to put the wig cap on, put the glue on, cut it off, then spray it. And I'm like, okay, that's making it really icky, really messy. And I don't really feel like it's adhering in the best way. So my new method is to spray the wig cap and then go ahead and put the glue over top of that. And then you just see a difference in how much it's already laid and slayed. So I'm just gonna cut the little ear tab ports out and then I'm gonna cut in the middle. And then when I'm doing it, I'm gonna actually go ahead and take the cap and pull it back a little bit past where the sticky is. That way when I'm cutting, it's already sticking. So you have to pull back and pull up a little bit just so you can get all the pieces that aren't frilly in the front. You don't really want those because you're gonna see them. And my whole purpose was like, child, I don't need to be seeing nothing. I need to get my wigs laid, laid, so I need to pull this back. So um, that's what I'm saying. You see how the tan, I mean, the beige glow looks a little ashy, but it's gonna end up working out regardless because I know what I'm doing. But it would take a little time. I ain't even gonna hold you. So then next, I'm gonna go ahead and put another layer of glue. And this one, I mean, my layers of glue look pretty thick, but they're not. I honestly do like thin layers. No matter how many layers you do, you wanna make sure you do them thin. So this is my second layer. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and spread out, out efficiently. And then we're gonna go ahead and do another layer, which is gonna be my third layer. And then I'm gonna actually lay, lay my wig with this. Now we're doing the one layer with the stocking cap and two layers. It will last me to style about two weeks. But typically, I don't never really even leave my hair in that long. So I just go ahead and move on to the next because y'all ain't nobody got time for that. Now I'm going to take my wig, you know, my half done wig and pull it up on the hairline, but put it a little bit before the hairline. Because I notice when you stop right where the glue is and then you cut it, it just makes it look a lot more wiggier. So you want to bring the wig a little bit before the hairline so that it is uh, lining up correctly. And on top of that, it just kind of makes it melt a little bigger, better. I don't know why though, it just really does though. It makes it melt like so much better. So next, of course, I'm gonna use my little Wiggins, my little Wiggins hairband to tie it down and lay it down. I'm probably gonna leave this on for maybe about five minutes cause I was in an extremely rush. I was in an extreme rush, but you know, I made it home, no issues, no biggies, no problems. But yeah, y'all seen I made it work. And now I'm gonna go through and crimp a couple little pieces of this, but that's the same process of when I crimped it down below or the first so you see how it looks oh my god i wanted to keep these so that's why i said i couldn't be doing too much touching i already got my little baby hairs laid out and i'm just going to take my little scissors and razor it if you have a razor definitely use it because you want it to have jagged edges and i think towards the 
back when I'm cutting it I was like it was longer in the front of the edge part but in the back of the edge part it was a little bit smaller and that's how that makes it curly better so I'm just gonna go ahead and curl my little curly cues and then I'm gonna take my spray and lay them and this was the final result it looks so good I love it I look chic pretty very clean and also um, they're gonna be doing this huge Black Friday discount free wig giveaway using a code wig I have everything detailed below in the description it is a limited offer so y'all get on top of it when you can but I thank you so much for tuning in. Also, make sure you guys follow me on Instagram if you want to see what my photos is giving in my little pictures or whatever. And yeah, I'll see you guys. Love you. Mwah. See ya. Oh, y'all see that milk? Okay. Melted. What lays? Because I don't see none. All right, now. I don't know. <laughs> see you guys. I love you. Mwah.